land where tradition and flavors intertwine. Millets have quietly adorned the Indian culinary heritage for decades, even dating back to the Harappan civilization. But with the ebb and flow of culinary preferences, there has been a decline in the consumption of millets and they've also slipped from the limelight they rightfully deserve. But that narrative is now poised for a transformation. India, as the largest millet producer, 41% of the world producer is now reclaiming its millet heritage. And with that is born an initiative between ITC and the News 18 network called Mission Millets. Hello and welcome. You're watching this special initiative. I'm Ridhima Bhatnagar. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll delve deep into the fascinating world of millets and its significance, especially in the light of the International Year of Millets and this special initiative, Mission Millets Campaign. more about the hidden nutritional values and the hidden treasures of this ancient grain, I am now joined in by a very special guest. Chef Manisha Basir has been kind enough to take out the time and join us for what looks like a very promising conversation. Thank you so much, Chef, for taking out the time. Chef Manisha Basir is the Corporate Executive Chef at ITC Hotels. Chef, once again, thank you so much for hosting us. Welcome, welcome to ITC Grand Bharat Ridhima. What better place to start to talk about millet than to ITC Grand Bharat, which has huge dreams and that's where the millet movement actually started with ITC Hotel. Oh, absolutely. I think our viewers are already very intrigued, Chef. Yeah. You know, when I introduced the show, I said, we at India are reclaiming our millet heritage. We want to dwell deep in the fascinating world of millets. So let's begin with the time in which we are speaking, which is the International Year of Millets. How do you see the significance of the International Year of Millets as far as the culinary world is concerned. So, uh, 2023 has been declared by UN as the International Year of Millet yeah. by, of course, on behest of Indian government and, of course, driven by the Prime Minister of India. Having said that, I think it's time to put the focus back on our heritage, on our, on our ancient grains, which brings so much of value to our food. So, all the chefs in the culinary world have put focus back on the millet and have tried to rediscover the old recipes at the same time come up with the global flavors. Yeah. When I'm saying that, that means that if I'm going to take millet in a very typical ancient Indian preparation to the international world, yeah. they may not be able to understand it per se. True. So we try to go with the local as well as global cuisine. Yeah. So we've tweaked the millet and made it into risottos, to pastas, to maybe chicken breast stuffed with pearl millet Sounds and multiple other things we've done to make it more adaptable, not only to the international clientele, yeah. but also to your young generation, which is in India as well. Yeah. Because sometimes they want to have little newness, little, you know, unique tweak to the taste itself. Yeah. Chef, you know, I want to understand, since you're saying there has been a great significance as far as the International Year of Millets is concerned, will it be fair to say that do you think the consumption and the perception of millets has also changed because of the International Year of Millets? So there are multi-pronged approach here. It's hmm. not only, uh, one is not doing it just for the perception, it is also millet can grow with one-tenth the quantity of water that is required to grow wheat. Interesting. So there is a, of course going to be a dearth of water already there is, we are seeing the effect of that. Yeah. So it's going, the, the crop is going to use lesser water but giving you better nutritional value and the benefit. Yeah. It makes all the more sense to add millet to your daily diets. So yes, there's so much of awareness, so much of movement, so much of millet that we are offering also on the buffet with ITC hotels as well. Yeah. We have been doing it. In fact, we've been doing it since from from, from very many years, since hmm. 2012 or 13, when we came with a program called Crusty Bread, wherein we made bread with the forgotten grains. Oh, interesting. Yes, and now we have it on our buffets as well. We started in 2022 sometime, that we have millet offering on our buffets. We have a Crusty Bread program, which changes every three months. Hmm. That means millet that is harvested at that time of the year, the bread is made out of that and put on the buffet that time. So there are multiple other programs, like we also have signature mornings, we also have the steam morning wherein the menu which is there again based on complete millet in an a la carte selection okay. where the guests can select it. So there are a lot of variations, a lot of interesting tweaks that we've done to the recipe to make it more acceptable and incorporate the mainstream food. 
So chef, fascinating uh, facets that we need to undiscover yeah. as far as and even discover as far as the millet's history is concerned. Why don't we continue this conversation and you can possibly show us around this fascinating property as well? Absolutely, let's do that. Let's go chef. fascinating conversation for our viewers as well as consumers it's important to understand the special steps initiatives that ITC hotels have taken as part of mission millets to increase the consumption as well as also increase awareness as far as millets are concerned so supporting the government's initiative on popularizing millet and mainstreaming that in our daily diets so ITC hotels and ITC senior leadership has taken this step you know that you they want to add the superfoods with the innovation so it's a uh, various divisions have worked on it it is not only itc hotels itc agri itc foods have kind of there's a lot of synergy between three divisions so agri helps us in resourcing the millets across the country True. whereas we kind of support them in coming up with various ready to eat innovation in the millet segment segment the chefs across the country are working on that okay and supporting working along with the itc food to come up with various innovations in the millet uh, ready to eat shelf uh, range per se. So that's what we are doing. And then ITC Hotel, of course, has various programs which are running across on the millet, which is uh, we have millet being offered on our buffets. Okay. Uh, we have signature mornings, uh, which is uh, the special food that comes on the buffet, which is start fresh. That hmm. means some of the a la carte dishes, which are based on the millet, are offered to our diners for the breakfast, okay. should he want to indulge in some healthy breakfast. Okay. Because millets not only are low in glycemic, yeah. high on iron, high on magnesium, and as we discussed earlier, need very little water to grow. It's lovely, it sounds advantages on all levels. So, Chef, I want to understand, your job is not easy. As a corporate chef, how have you made that decision to incorporate the principles of Mission Millet in the culinary offerings of ITC hotels? Because that is something that will be very interesting for our viewers as well as the consumers. So, ITC hotels have always been known for the responsible luxury initiatives and lots of work that we do in the sustainability genre per se. Yeah. So and the, with the Millet program, this was the, this was the right window for us to work on. So when we launched these various programs that we discussed earlier, yeah. whether it's on the buffet or start of fresh program, the chefs across the country worked on it. Okay. So we have a team of close to 300 chefs across our various hotels. Okay. And they all come from various regions and they bring back, bring back a lot of value. Yeah. You know, whether what they have learned from their grandparents or they would have worked with their local farmers yeah. there. So the welcome hotel that we have across, whether in Bhubaneswar or in Uttarakhand or in Machal Pradesh, so there they have the advantage of going back to the farmer as well. Oh, lovely! So they work along with them and come up with some recipes that they would have, they would be making at home. Sure. The traditional wisdom of culinary is very important here. So what they bring back on the table is the what they learn from these local uh, cuisine which we offer under Welcome Thalika program that we run across our welcome hotels. Okay. So that is being offered. And then of course we make our millet a little more global. Okay. We be, do little innovation there to make it more adaptable to the international diner as sure. well. That sounds lovely and hearing all of this chef, I think we've built up an appetite. So I think our viewers and consumers will also be very thrilled to see how we can whip up some tasty dishes as far as millets are concerned. Why don't we see our viewers in the kitchen next? Absolutely, look Let's forward to chef. that. Now we've reached the kitchen. Of course, our appetite is also now being worked up. But you know, for people who still are not very, you know, familiar with millets, talk to us about the nutritional advantages of millets. If you add millets to your diet, how does it become more sustainable, more nutritious, more healthier? So, uh, what what he's making right now is a millet ka halim, as you can see. Uh, but this is a variation to authentic haleem which is made with the with the lamb. So we okay. replaced lamb with millet, which is again adding little more protein to the diet. 
So you have to think little differently when you're incorporating millet to your daily diet. Yeah. Someone who's initiating into the millet journey, you know, he's starting introducing millet to his food every day, mm. should not get into 100% millet, you know, because then your your gut may not be able to absorb it very well. That's important. So it's important. So gradually incorporate in your daily diets. If you were if you're making khichdi, for example. If I was making khichdi, then you add a bit of millet, bit of dal, bit of rice, Achha. and you get the millet. Okay. Very important to handle millet is you soak the millet overnight, so that the so that the skin breaks, so it's easily easily digestible. Very often people are uh, sometimes they cannot digest millet. Yeah. So if you're making bajre ki roti, unless you are gluten intolerant and you really can't eat gluten at all, mm. then you can fortify your atta with millet. Oh, okay. Add your take your regular atta, add a little bit of millet to that, whatever percentage, forty percent, fifty percent, then gradually scale it up. So you don't add hundred percent. You don't add hundred percent because your body also may not be able to accept it initially. True. And gradually introduce into your diet so that eventually it becomes sustainable in your diet as well. Yeah. Because otherwise the idea is to add millet. Uh, not only for your diet, for your health, also for the well-being of the farmer who's growing it, yeah. also for the well-being of the mother earth because it, it takes less water. It has a very short life cycle to mm. grow. Two and a half to three months, the millet is ready to be harvested. Mm. So you don't need that much of you don't need to use that much of natural resources to grow millet. So that's why gradually add to your diet so that it's sustainable over a long period of time rather mm. than just you know taking it as a as a as a fashion, very fashionable thing to do. I think that's a very important tip because this helps people who want to incorporate millets also give them an easy guide of yeah. how they can start digesting eating millets. That's right. But this is doesn't sound very easy, chef. So you know, I'm sure there would have been challenges to incorporate millet in the dishes that you offer at ITC hotels. But what is the kind of way that you found to overcome those challenges? So it's of course one has been the uh, you know uh, experimenting with millet for a long time, yeah. almost more than a decade now. However, when the 23 was declared as a mission millet, we took it upon ourselves to introduce to our food. So yes, initially there were a lot of trials that yeah. happened. So we learned that we have to pre-soak it mm -hmm. to make sure that it's more adaptable. Don't go 100% with it because it may not augur very well with your sometimes with people. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of R&D happens there. And uh, so when you're making, let's say, a risotto or you're making, uh, you're making potato, let's say you're yeah. making zira aloo. Okay. You're making zira aloo, you take a kutki millet, you take a little millet, pre-soak it mm. and add to your potato. It gives another variation. It has a crunch, it is beautiful to taste. So that is your, all your R&D that will come about handy in this. As if there's no shortcut here, there are no quick fix recipes sure. here. But it's also a lot of texture that adds to your it adds to your diet. Yeah. Plus, of course, the nutrition benefit that comes along with that. So there you heard from the chef herself how you can incorporate millets in your diet to make it more healthy, more nutritious, and even to make it more sustainable. I think our food is almost ready, but we do have to slip into a very short break. When we come back, we enjoy the food that the chefs have made for us. Welcome back. Thanks a lot for staying with us. We're in conversation with Chef Manisha Bhaseen, who's the corporate executive chef at ITC Hotels. And we're trying to reignite the potential of millets through this collaborative initiative between ITC Hotels and News 18 Network called Mission Millets. Chef, it's been a fascinating conversation till now, but there is still so much more to discuss, specifically as far as a consumer perspective is concerned. You know, we spoke about how people can incorporate millets in their dishes. But I also want to understand, since ITC Hotels was a pioneer in terms of incorporating millets in the menu, how has the response been as far as the consumers are concerned? And as we're talking, I can see the delicious food being served to us as well. Uh, exactly, we are eating what we just cooked some time back. So, Chef, would you want to first talk to us about what we're eating and then you could talk to us about how the consumers have also reacted? Yeah. So what we are having is the is the halim, the bajra halim. Uh, bajra is from the Mewat region where we are sitting right now at IDC Grand Bharat. Yeah. It's, it's very 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 famous dish here. Uh, traditionally, halim is made with lamb. 
However, we are making it with bajra. It goes very well with the chilies that are grown in literally in our backyard. Okay. In the hydroponic uh, farm that we have at ITC okay. Grand Bharat. So it's all local for local rather. <laughs> it is grown and literally zero carbon footprint that you have in sourcing this. Because even the bajra that is on your plate is okay. sourced from the nearby farms. Okay. So as you drive into this hotel, it's it's lined with the farms which are which grow all the millet around. Okay. Yeah. So uh, coming back to your question on the how how consumers are taking hmm. it. So at ITC Hotels, it is our endeavor to make consumer uh, understand the goodness of millet, hmm. make an informed choice. So it's not only we are like I earlier also said that we are not only making Indian uh, cuisine. Our repertoire extends beyond Indian. We are hmm. also doing international, global. Uh, we are doing some pastas. We are hmm. doing some risottos. We are doing. Chicken, various preparations, mm. even the desserts which are millet based. Mm. Not only Indian, but cheesecakes also are made. Mm. The breads that are made are based on millet. So recently, um, as of two days ago, we have launched a uh, uh, millet under millet mission. We have launched uh, uh, a compendium of bread based recipes, okay. which are based on millet, and it is uh, it's being shared with the with the Marriott uh, APAC region. Okay. So those recipes are also going to be launched in China, Indonesia, Japan, and these countries as well. Okay. So the uniqueness of those recipes are that it is not only using the Indian millet, but mm. also Indian spices, whether it's turmeric or ajwain or jeera, mm. to make it more versatile for people also to understand globally that you can make a international cuisine with the local ingredients which are available, which come from India. So much uh, trivia as far as millets are concerned. Your food's also getting cold, yeah, yeah. Uh, chef. It's, uh, it's absolutely delicious. You know, you won't really imagine how millets can be transformed into so many different dishes. And that's where I think the hospitality industry also, chef, plays such a large role. Uh, but going forward, what do you think can be the role of the hospitality industry in carrying forward this millet revolution? In the hospitality industry, I think they put the humble millet on the luxury plates. Mm. So you are exposing the millet to the international traveller, your humble grain, which may not have come to the limelight in their plates actually. Mm. So when they stay in the hotel, they understand that there is a millet uh, repertoire available mm. and they, they learn to appreciate it all the more. Mm. And also the goodness of millet which you, which you can't miss. Chef, I also want to understand, you know, you're now being seen as a millet ambassador but as i said the journey is only half done going forward how can various stakeholders come together to carry forward this revolution the momentum that we already gained okay so uh, many years ago uh, we used to go to the farmers market mm -hmm. that's where we saw the millet and the various of course indigenous indian ingredients which are available across which you may not find with your local sabzi wala or in various departmental stores so mm -hmm. this farmers market actually worked to the to the very objective mm. and worked in a good way to create the awareness about it. Mm. And then when the chef put these things on the plate, you are also make, creating a market for the farmer. You are making a market that it's not only the international diners who come and mm. eat with us, it's only the local clients, the people who are living in and around the hotel mm. do frequent us. So they get to see the millet also. So mm. when we put it on the buffets, they also ask these questions. So it's a collaboration between the farmer, the chef and the guest at the same mm. time. Because you're, very indirectly, very subtly, yeah. in a very intangible way, creating a market for the millet as well. Yeah. It's also supporting the farmer, supporting the environment, under a responsible luxury of ITC at the same time. Yeah. So much to unpack here, but so much to learn as well. This has been a pleasure, Chef. Thank you so much for taking up the time and showing us around, but also talking to us about how we can carry forward the millet revolution. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Well, we'd like to thank Chef Manisha for this enriching conversation to help us understand how we can incorporate millets in our daily diet to make it more nutritious, more healthier, more sustainable and more importantly, how we can carry forward this millets mission as well. Remember, with each bite, you also have the capability and the responsibility to make our nutrition more healthier, not just for us, but for our future generations as well. With that, we've come to an end of this episode. We hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we did bringing it to you. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.